help you your prayer this morning can you go ahead and pray that the Lord will draw you close to himself pray this morning let that be your prayer you are all that I want call upon God this morning it's all that you needed ask him to draw you this morning draw me close to you Lord draw me close to you Lord draw me close to you Lord you are all that I need you are all that I want do not let me go do not let me go open your mouth this morning say Lord draw me unto yourself draw me unto yourself it says I no longer call you servants you are my friend because you do that which I command ask him to draw you this morning draw me not draw us draw me make it personal say Lord draw me draw me unto yourself Lord draw me unto yourself Lord draw me unto yourself thank you Jesus thank you Jesus Thank you, Jesus. We honor you this morning. Lord, we appreciate you. That indeed, O oh God, your nature is always to have mercy. By your mercy, O oh God, draw us unto yourself. Let every one of us have an encounter this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Open our hearts, O oh God, to receive your word. Write your word upon the template of our hearts and let us be drawn closer to you, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, let your word have its free course and let it come with power and understanding in the mighty name of Jesus. Spirit of the living God, have your way in this assembly this morning. Impact your word upon us in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. For in Jesus' name, we have prayed. God bless you. Please sit. Welcome somebody to church this morning. Just welcome somebody to church. Say you are welcome in the name of the Lord. The Lord will bless you richly from his word today. You will not go back the same way you have come. In the mighty name of Jesus. In your life, the glory of the latter house will surpass the former. Your story will not be told in the past. In the mighty name of Jesus. It will not be said it was of God yesterday. We don't know what has become of him today. That will not be your portion in the name of Jesus. But rather you will continue to grow from glory unto glory. Because your path will shine brighter and brighter unto that day. In the mighty name of Jesus. This morning we're looking at draw me close to you. Draw me close to you. There is an encounter. The heavens is loaded in this month. Um, I thank God that is happening in this month. Don't worry. But the heavens is loaded. Because this month, in fact this week, from the ninth of this week, God is set to do great and marvelous things with our lives. Don't be left behind. Make out time to be at those meetings. The Holy Ghost gathering, God is set. The cloud is full. And God is set to, there is going to be an outpouring. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. Say to your neighbor, don't miss it. He didn't hear you. Don't miss it. God is bringing us to a place of glory and honor. And that's why in Deuteronomy 8, reading from 7, Deuteronomy 8, from 7 to 10, quickly. It says, For the Lord thy God bringeth thee into where? A good land a land of brooks of water, of fountains 
and depths that spring out of valleys and hills. Verse 8. A land of wheat and belly and, wine, and vines and fig trees and pomegranates. A land of oil, olive, and honey. A land wherein thou shalt eat bread without scarceness. Thou shalt not lack anything in it. A land whose stones are irons, and out of whose hills thou mayest dig brass. Verse 10. When thou hast eaten and art full, then thou shalt bless the Lord thy God for the good land which he has given thee. Our case will not be like the case of Aga, who had water close to her. But yet, what was going to happen? She was going to die with a child as close as water was to them. This week, don't miss out on that which God is said to do. Beginning the night, don't miss out. God is said to do wondrous things in our lives. If you look at the Genesis 28 that we read, Genesis 28, the account of Jacob. Jacob at that time was at the low point of his life. He needed nothing less than a close encounter with the divine. He was running away. He knew that if his brother gets hold of him, that would be death. Because of, he has come to realize what he has done. And so he was running away. He was running because he doesn't want um, his brother to deal with him. But God, whose nature is always to have mercy, caught up with him. The Bible says he was running, he was running towards Aaron. And God, at some point, had to interject that journey. I'm praying for somebody. It doesn't matter how far you have gone in the journey of life. The Lord will encounter you. <laughs> Jacob, at that point, needed God's intervention, not the intervention of man. He wasn't looking for men of war to help him with the circumstance he has found himself. He needed a divine intervention that can only come from God. And all we are saying to ourselves in this month, the heavens are opened. All we are saying to God is that there will be what? Divine intervention. We have read of your promises. We have been told of your promises, but yet we are not seeing the full measure of it. At such times, what is required is divine intervention. You have prayed. You have laid so many things before God. I am saying God is already the fifth month of the year. And yet God is saying the heavens are loaded. The cloud is full. There is that time of the outpouring. All you need is divine intervention. And so Jacob, in the course of that journey, at the point he had concluded that, ah, it's finished. He was so tired and fucked out he decided to take a rest. He decided to take a rest. You know what I mean? He was saying that, look, at this point, even if he will come and pick me here, so be it. I am now done with the best of it. It was as bad as that he took a stone to rest 
said, where are you in the journey of life? Have stones become your pillow? Are you resting in that very hard and very tough place? As the journey weighed you down, where are you? Where are you? The good news I have for you is that the Lord will draw you unto himself. I say the Lord will draw you unto himself. Amen. Jacob laid there. The Bible says, a ladder from heaven. Angels descending and doing what? And ascending. Angels came to pick whatever it is that was in Jacob's life that will not allow him to have that relationship with God. And at every point that those things were being taken out, you know what was happening? There was also what? A replacement. God was putting in him that which is required for the rest of the journey of life. And that's what God is said to do with our lives in this period. He's going to take away from us everything that we do not require for the rest of the journey of life. Everything that has kept us at various bus stops. God is going to come in his power. He said, when he ascended into heaven, you know what he went to do? Jesus went to obtain gifts. He went to obtain numerous things for us. And that's why he said, all that we need to make life good for us, he has obtained them for us. He's willing to do what? To release them to us. If only you are willing. Obedience is key. Faith is key. Intimacy is key. Remember those three words. You must be ready to obey his word. You must be ready to walk in faith. And I dare say that on the other side, if you form an equation, if you say obedience plus faith is equal to intimacy with God. When you obey his word, you know it was saying to, it was said of Moses in Exodus 33, 11. Exodus 33, verse 11. It says, and the Lord spake unto Moses, Face to face, as a man speaketh unto his friend. He said, and he turned again into the camp. But his servant Joshua, the son of Noah, a young man. Now, God spoke to Moses. Now, don't forget, why is this encounter possible? When Moses had the encounter with God, and he told him that, look, you are going to do this, you are going to do that. He never argued obedience. He didn't ask for the instrument of war to deliver the children of Israel out of Egypt. Faith. And what happened? God, in recording about him, he spoke to him. He became the friend of God. Those three ingredients... When you, have, when you obey, when you have faith, then you will enjoy a relationship with God that is beyond the relationship of mere Christian. You become his friend. When you are drawn to him, when he brings you to a place where you surrender all, his will is your will. It's not about you. You are not of them that have decided to divide the, you know, Old Testament, New Testament. When he favors them, it's New Testament. When he does not, it is Old Testament. 
you are not like those Christians. You are the Christian who believes and obeys and lives by the words of the scriptures. Without any, you know, faith and reasoning sometimes. You can reason out faith. When you begin to ask, is it true? Thomas said, let us see you. Let us see. When you have become like Thomas, what has happened to you is that you have reasoned out faith. Don't be like that. Now, why is it necessary that the Lord would draw us close to himself? Psalm 115 verse 3 says, Our God in heavens, our God is in the heavens. He does whatsoever, whatsoever. Think about it. Whatsoever pleases him. That's what he does. So if I have the privilege to be drawn to such, if, if somebody appears in this hall now, you know our politicians, if one of them just is present in this congregation and he says to you that, look, do you know that the president does not go to sleep until he tells me? Do you know that I am the one that tells the president to drink water before he drinks it? How many of you want to be the friend of such a man being? I'm sure, I mean, a good percentage of us, because you then would believe that, oh, this man, if he's the one that takes the president, the way we part our babies to go to bed, if he's the one that gets the president to go to sleep, then whatever I need, he should be able to get it from the president. But we're talking of the king of kings, the almighty God, who sits in heaven, and the scripture says it does whatsoever pleases him. And he's giving you the privilege, the honor, to be drawn unto him. Be drawn to him. The second point is that he is the Alpha and the Omega. Revelations 22, 13. Said, I am the Alpha. Reve 13, please. 22, 13. He said, I am Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end. The first. And is in charge of everything. The Bible says, from the beginning, he knows the end. So why won't I want to be in relationship with the Almighty God? Who is in control? Everything you can think of. You know, I love when people try to put boundary to waters. Bible says, God, beyond what you see of the earth or the land, he said he sets the boundary of waters. He's the one that says to water, you can't go beyond this. The alpha, the omega. Be drawn to him. He's all-knowing. All-knowing. Isaiah 45, 3. All knowing. Nothing goes past him. He says, and I will give thee the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret place. What you don't know, what you cannot have access to, the information that men have hidden from you, Whatever it is that is able to take you beyond the now of life, he said, I have it. He said, they are eating riches. It's with him. He is able to give to us. That's the God that is calling you to come. That's the God that is drawing you unto himself. All knowing, nothing goes past him. And in Psalm 23, verse 1 to 2, it says, 
The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not what? That's the God we're discussing. Said with him, when I have that relationship with him, I shall not want. Verse 2. He made me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. The troubles of life cannot consume me when I am drawn close to him. Troubles will come. Storms of life will come. But it will not do what? It will not drown me. Why? Because the one who sets the boundary of all of those things, the alpha, the omega, the all knowing, is the one I have a relationship with. Be drawn to him. Be drawn to him. He knows everything. And that's why in Psalm 115, verse 3, he said, but it is good. Okay, he said, but our God is in the heavens. He had done, what, no, Psalm 73, verse 28. Psalm 73, 28. He said, but it is good for me to be what? To be drawn nearer to God. It is a good thing because of the benefits of the fact that I have him as the Alpha and Omega. He's in charge. He knows about all things. He is a good shepherd. And how about the portion we read in John? From verse 12 that we read, John 15, from verse 12. He said, this is the commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Go on. Run for time. Go on. He says, ye are my friends. If you do what? Whatsoever I command you. That's what? That's what in our equation. Uh, have you forgotten the equation so quickly? That's what in our equation. Obedience. If you do whatsoever, if you don't argue with me, if you don't ask me why should 10% be taken when 100% is not enough, why should I in any case pay at all? If you don't argue with me. Verse 15. He said, henceforth, because you have obeyed, henceforth, from now hereafter, I call you not servants. For the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth, but I have, what, I have called you friends. For all things that I have had of my Father, I have made known unto you. Why? Because you are my friends. And when you believe me, you have this relationship with me. Verse 16. He said, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain that whatsoever you ask. Now, this is the intimacy part of it. Whatsoever you ask of the Father in my name, he will do what? He may give it to you. You know why it's made? Do you know why? Until you fulfill the obedience part of it, it is conditional. But once you fulfill the obedience part of it and it's mixed with faith in your heart, the word that is being spoken to you, then you enjoy that intimacy. I pray that God will give us understanding in the mighty name of Jesus. How can I do this? Receive Jesus as your Lord and your personal Savior. That's where it starts from. That is where it starts from. If you are not born again, ah, you know, when we 
became born again. One of the things, um, as young men, our friends will tell, you are missing, you. They say you are missing, you. You are, you are seriously missing. Today, a few of them um, that I still see around, I always will ask myself, what is it truly that I missed? I'm still looking for it. What is it that I missed? That I became born again as a teenager. I'm asking, my, what is it that I missed? I haven't found it. I don't know if you know, I don't, but I don't know. Because when I look at them today, truly in their mind, they thought they were ahead of us. They were doing all of this. Were, all the things that I'm asking, what is it? I, what is it that I have not been able to lay my hands on it? You have nothing to miss, but you have all to gain. All. When you come to Christ, when you surrender your life to him, when you become born again, you have all to gain. Nothing to lose. You are not going to miss anything. All those things that they think, look, by the time you are taking stock, you will know, like some of us have come to know, you have not missed anything. Be born again. Surrender your life to him. Works will not save you. You know, that you come to church every Sunday is not salvation. It's not of works that any man should boast. That grace that brings salvation has appeared unto all men. Surrender your life to him so that you can enjoy the life of intimacy. Learn to study the word. Make the word your companion. Why? You see, let's look at that 2 Timothy verse 16. 2 Timothy 3.16. 2 Timothy 3.16. It says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. Now, it only then means that if I take my Bible and I'm reading it, what is happening? I am being inspired by God. I am drawing inspiration. In fact, some version says, they are, they, it says, it says, I have it. It said, all scripture is breathed out by God. It's the breath of God that has been transcribed for us. So that anytime you are studying the Bible, God is breathing upon you. You are taking in the life of God. And that's why you must not joke with the Bible. It cannot be your Sunday, Sunday that I pray. I don't know if it's still available now. It cannot be that only on Sunday you carry your Bible and you say, ah, we are going to church. No. It has to be an everyday affair. You must seek his face in the place of the study of the word so that it can inspire you to do great works every day. And then you must learn to pray. You must learn to pray. Because it is in prayer that you ask and you get whatever it is that you ask for. Be drawn. Let God draw you unto himself. Now let's quickly look at, I mean, we've looked at Moses. Um, let's see what is said of Abraham in Genesis 18. Um, Okay, when you get home, read that portion of it. 17 to 33 is a long one. We're not going to read. But what happened? God was going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Now, the summary of that portion of the scripture was that because of the relationship Abraham enjoyed with God, God was asking permission of Abraham. If you read that portion, he was, he, was, he was discussing with Abraham. And Abraham was saying to him, what if you find this? What if you find that? What if you... Abraham was negotiating with him for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah. Meanwhile, God sits in heaven. He decides on whatsoever pleases him. 
But he has some special people that are able to negotiate with him and say to him, Lord, even though you have chosen to do this, because I am your friend, reduce it. Do this. Do that. I pray that we will enjoy such relationship in the name of Jesus. That you can commune with him. You can sit and discuss issues of life with him. You can even negotiate. That was what he was doing. And in the case of Moses that we read earlier on, he spoke to him face to face. And by the time he was getting back to the camp, they knew that this man have had, he has had an encounter with God. And that's why James, James that we read, James 4 that we read, quickly, the 1 to 10, we'll take a few. Go on, go on, go on, go on to verse 5, please. It says, do you think that the scripture says in vain, the spirit that dwelleth in us lost to envy? Go on, verse 6. It says, but he giveth more grace. Wherefore, he said, God receives the proud, but gives grace unto the humble. The humble. He says, submit yourself therefore to God, receive the devil. All that is the desire of the devil is to make sure that we do not have this relationship we're talking about. Tell me, what more can the devil say to David? What more can the devil say to Moses? What more can the devil say to Abraham? I'm sure Moses will say, when they were shouting and doing all they were doing, he probably would just say to himself, ah, shout, oh, I'm going to meet with him face to face. Whether it is later in the day or later. People will just shout. Now, if you have such, and they are saying, in your office, they are saying, ah, trouble. This, this. And you have, just go to God. And you are discussing with God and saying, God, is, this, is it true? Is it true that this is what you want to do? No, let's not do it that way. Let's do it this other way. That was the relationship men of old enjoyed with God. And it's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. So he, he, he doesn't walk in the past. He is the same God. And is willing to give us such privilege. Go to verse 8. Verse 8. It says what? Draw near to God. And he will draw near to you. Wash your hands. Purify your hearts. And don't be what? Double-minded. Wash your hands. Be holy. Come to him with a clean heart. Don't be double-minded. And he will what? He will draw you unto himself. Brethren, the beginning of the journey is as you surrender your life to Jesus. I'm not talking, that, I'm not talking about the fact that your parents are Christians or you grew up in a Christian home. Because of that which God is said to do this week, it is important that you come to that place of assurance of your relationship with him. Only when you are sure of that, that's when you can place a demand on God. If you are not, you cannot place a demand on God. And so this morning, before we pray for the rest of us, because we're going to cry to God, you know that song says, I am dying, O Lord. I have heard your voice. You have heard the voice of God. Say, draw me nearer. Just draw me, God. Take hold of me. We're going to pray that prayer. But before we pray, so that we can all benefit of the grace of God that is in the assembly of his people, if you are here, you are here to surrender your life to Jesus. All let's bow now as we pray. I want you to lift up your hand wherever you are. Let's quickly pray with you and then we can go on to pray the general prayer.
You want to give your life to Jesus? If you are lifting up your hand, lift it up above your head. Let the heavens see it, please. Yes, God bless you. Are there more hands? We want to pray quickly with you. You are here. You want to surrender your life to Jesus? You want to start a journey of communion with God? A relationship that cannot be compared to any. Or you are not even sure. You suspect that you don't have that relationship with him. You may have been born again some time ago, but you want to rededicate your life to Jesus quickly. Raise up your hand and let's pray with you. Father in heaven, you see those hands. Jehovah God of heaven, I ask that the power to keep this decision of theirs will come upon them now in the name of Jesus. I pray for them that indeed, O oh God, from now henceforth, you will become their Lord and their personal Savior in the name of Jesus. Thank you because you have had us. So you be the glory forevermore. For in Jesus' name, we have prayed. The rest of us, let's rise as we pray. Let's rise this morning as we cry out to God. That song right that says, draw me nearer, draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord. Draw me nearer, yes, Lord. nearer, blessed Lord, to the draw me nearer unto yourself. I want to have that close relationship with you. The relationship that, made, that will make you refer to me as your friend. He said, I no longer call you servants, but you are my friends because you do whatsoever I commanded you. Pray to him. I hope you are praying for yourself. If you hear a message like this and you don't consolidate it with prayer from your mouth, you are not doing yourself good. Lord, draw me nearer to yourself. Let me enjoy friendship with you. Let me be among those who will hear you when you speak. Draw me close to yourself. Draw me close to yourself. Let me understand you. Abraham had a relationship of friendship with, Christ, with, with God and he enjoyed it for the rest of his life. You can enjoy the same thing. More especially that Jesus said we are his friends. Pray for yourself. Pray for yourself. Ash. 
shekanda zika le makasatanda niki kali kariba shire let your let your word have impact 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 let's pray for the speaker that the lord will fill him again use him for greater exploit in the days ahead let's pray that the hand of the lord will rest upon him and he will walk close to god as his friend father we thank you for the word we have received today thank you for the power that rests upon your word thank you for the inspiration that is drawn from the word of god this morning father i pray for everyone that have received the word today i pray that those words will benefit you and lift your life ahead in the mighty name of jesus christ i pray for everyone that in the mighty name of jesus no one will miss out in walking with god after this message in the name of jesus christ i pray for the speaker i pray that the hand of the lord will rest upon him and that you will use him for greater exploits in the future in the name of jesus thank you everlasting father lord we receive the word with thanksgiving in jesus precious name we are prayed amen god bless you please be seated